project manager. In short, we, we also call it Agile project manager. So we will discuss a uh, little concept about design and what is design, how it is different from the design process that we will discuss. So let's start with my introduction. So I have around 17 years of experience in software design and development. I started my career as a software engineer in 2005. Then I worked around 7 8 years in technical profile, programming and software engineer, tech lead, project lead. Then gradually I moved to management group. I started working as a project manager, scrum master, design project manager from year 2014. So I have around 10 years of experience in software project management and around 7 years in technical. So earlier I worked with uh, various uh, different companies like HCL, Mastery. Also work for startups, uh, the system, so this kind of things. Uh, I'm, I've also written two books on project management that is a little long in this one, and that is mostly related to project management topics. So you guys can also read uh, that. I've also published various articles on LinkedIn. Uh, around 100 articles I've published related to technology and management and LinkedIn stuff. Apart from that. So, or at all, I guess, platform are part of those masters. Uh, I also regularly provide a similar kind of speech in various other organizations. I have my own YouTube channel also, uh, project management topic only. So, this is a production about me. So, let's start uh, in this paper. So, whatever uh, information I am going to share here, that is my personal view. Uh, this is nowhere related uh, with my present and so, as in of today's meeting, like we will discuss what is predictive project management and what are the limitations. So, prerequisite of this class is you should have knowledge, a little knowledge about uh, traditional project management. Uh, but if, if, if you don't have uh, questions, you can ask questions related to that. But we will see what are the limitations in traditional project management, predictive project management, and why design came into the picture. What is design manifesto? We will discuss values and principles. Then we will discuss various uh, different design project methodologies. Then I will also provide introduction of Scrum. Then we will also discuss like what are the different career opportunities that are in project management. I think next year, by next year, you guys will be uh, ready for job. So we can explore this uh, project management also by like how we can if you wanted to become project management. What are the skills? What are the knowledge we need to develop? Uh, we will discuss that. So let's start with uh, predictive project management and what is the limitations. So as you know, uh, predictive project management is a waterfall model. So see, uh, one, uh, one thing, uh, because I have most of uh, like I have a lot of experience related to IT industry. So I will provide examples related to IT, but which doesn't mean uh, like this project management is only for IT. There are, you can implement your project management knowledge in uh, across industry, any, uh, any industry. Okay. But examples are mostly related to IT. Okay. So first we need to understand what is what are the limitations of predictive project management and why uh, Isile came into the picture. So see, in predictive project management, what effect? First, we complete one entire process, then we move to next process. So if I give example of uh, project management, uh, project uh, any Software project. So first phase is requirement analysis. First you complete your requirement. Then you start designing of application. How? What are the architecture? What is the database uh, uh, architecture? So this is part of designing. Once we complete the designing part, then developers start development of uh, application. They write programming language. They write database script queries and start development work. After development work closer. Testers or QA team start testing of application that will not be debugged and then it again is go back to development. Uh, so, this way this cycle works. Then, application moves to deployment phase. Uh, we deploy application on various servers so it is accessible for end user. Then, it goes to maintenance phase. But for this approach, there is a lot of uh, issue, a lot of problem. So, see, entire phase sometimes takes six months or one year of a cycle to complete. Okay. And many times 
what the requirement they uh, they got one year back is not it was not visible at the time of the project plan at the time of the user. So when it's reached to you, this user it's maybe it's absolute outdated or maybe requirement got changed. So there is a lot of problem in, in this case. Like what if the company invests some money at the starting of the project, they will they will get their refund uh, like return at the end of the project. So they need to wait in one year. So there are a lot of problem in this uh, predictive project manager and waterfall model. That's why uh, see we can see other problem area also like it's a rigid it's a very rigid uh, framework architecture. So you need to do a lot of planning at the starting of uh, project and uh, you can start execution after planning. But what happens if, if you if you don't plan something, if something unexpected ha happened? Then it is very difficult to handle those kind of situation. Second problem area is autocracy. The one person project management is, uh, project manager, uh, manager is responsible for entire execution of the project. It's a one man show. So if project manager is not very capable or if it's, if it's not uh, like a strong project manager, then it is very difficult to manage entire project. Okay. Return of investment I already mentioned. Company get return of investment at the end of the project only. Uh, it's also focus only on process part. Like it is, uh, they don't focus on people part. But people is the key of any organization, any project. Don't focus on people, then it will not go to work. Second problem area is command and control leadership. Like what project manager said, you need to follow blindly. Other people's opinion doesn't matter. Okay. So centralized management system, there is no any really democracy, like other people's opinion doesn't matter. A uh, lot of focus on documentation part. You need to provide documentation for a lot of things like management cycle, deployment, requirement, a lot of documentation required. In uh, this predictive process manager. So, see uh, if any change required, then very restrict change management system. So, these are the limitations. That's why SI came into the picture. Okay. So, we have a group of people like you can find information on this guy in uh, this website, SI Manifesto, originally published in 2001. So, group of people, around 17 people, uh, gathered at one place and they discuss about this problem how we can overcome this problem, how we can solve this issue, what are the new methodologies we can, uh, project management methodology we can introduce, which resolve this kind of problem, which is existing predictive project management. Then, they come up with these four values, quality design manifest of both values. Here, they focus more on individual and interaction, like communication between people, and uh, focus on individual people, rather than process and activity. Whatever mentioned in the process, they don't, they say, don't focus much on this part. Focus on individual and interaction part. Second value is working software is the primary measure of success. It's not comprehensive document. Doesn't matter how documents you have, but if you don't have working software, it means you have not learned no progress. So that's why in every, like every 15 days or every uh, one month, we have working software in place. So we can measure the progress. Third value is customer collaboration, like collaboration with internet team and collaboration with the outside team, with customer, lot of interaction happening in design team. Uh, over contract negotiation, don't, they don't follow what is written in contract. Like if customer is satisfied, it's actually it's with the contract objective. Okay. Fourth value is responding to change, they could be uh, provide response to the change over following the plan. So, in predictive project management, we focus more on planning part, like we do a lot of planning, and at the end of planning, we start execution. But here, you don't follow the plan, plan, you only need to respond to change. If the customer says, he, uh, this piece of software I don't like, and I need this modification, we quickly provide uh, like option to change. They don't require to visit a uh, change management process. Then we have 12 principles in design manifesto. So, uh, I'm just going to narrate a few principles like customer satisfaction, focus on customer satisfaction, changing requirement, so they can quickly adopt the changing requirement, frequent delivery, after, after 15 minutes, uh, days or after one month, you provide delivery, working software. Now, you don't require to wait till six months or one year, 
every 15 days you will, you will have deployment software. So we provide frequent delivery. Communicate regularly with the uh, internal team, with customer, with different stakeholders. So I will share this slide with all you guys. So, uh, so support uh, team members also. Many a time uh, in team we have we have senior team members, we have, sometimes we have junior team members, sometimes uh, they have a lot of experience, sometimes most people don't have much experience. So in SIT, we usually uh, senior team members provide support to junior team members. So all the team work in a collaboration. Face to face communication. So before SIT, it is very, before COVID, uh, before COVID, it is very necessary. Like all the team members sit at one place and communicate very frequently. But after SIL, uh, after COVID, actually a lot of tools available to teams where we exercise more on face to face communication. Then, major working process we have a lot of matrices available where we can measure the working uh, like progress of project. Uh, so, these are the uh, 12 principles which we rigorously follow in SIL. Let's move. So, there are two major areas where change happened compared to project management in SIL uh, after this SIL manifesto. So first in traditional project management earlier the scope was prints and time and cost is movable. Like if I need to build, I am giving you example, uh, let's example Amazon dot, uh, Amazon, okay, shopping website. So if my scope, like I need to build uh, Amazon website and if, if I need to meet that criteria, then my scope was fixed, like this set of work I had to do, I have to any, any way I have to complete. But maybe that takes six one time or maybe six lakhs rupees I'm giving for example. But after time they realize no, it is not possible to complete in six months. They may increase the timeline. Maybe if they now complete in eight months, twelve months, but they may increase the cost, maybe eight lakh rupees or ten lakh rupees. So earlier scope was fixed, but here it's changed now. Now they are saying no. The scope is not fixed. It can be movable. My cost and time should be fixed. If I, if I say I have six months of time only, then we will complete my project in six months only. So we won't have, we will not increase it by uh, seven months or eight months. And if I fix budget, because see every company has a fixed budget. And if I fix budget, let's suppose if I need to complete this project in six lakh rupees, then I will complete six lakh rupees only. But here I can change the scope. What I will do? I will prioritize the work, like what are the important things I need to complete first and I will work uh, first on those items and if my time permit and if my money permit then only I will do remaining work which is not so important, not very, uh, not provide a lot of value. Okay. So here it's a two major changes. Second change in project manager role. Okay, so now role is also important. Earlier project manager role was only lead the team. Like it's, it was a uh, auto, auto which it was not a democratic role, it was just an uh, automatic role, command and control. So project manager is the only responsible role and uh, sole person for any project. Now this role uh, got a lot of changes. Now role is more servant leadership, like supportive role, democratic role. Like now every team member is in power, they can share their thoughts. And uh, it's not only project manager who take on the decision. So entire team is uh, taking decision. Entire team provides their suggestion, and it's a people focus group. Okay. So a lot of role like now we call it a scrum master, design project manager, uh, design coach. You can search in not many Nokia website, job website, and you will find this kind of role exists. A lot of roles are available. So this is major shift in project management. So design is a term we use. Design is not a one metrology. It's a collection of metrology. Like so many other metrologies are part of design. Like Scrum, Strain Programming, e product Development, Kanban, uh, PDD, Test Development, uh, the, uh, PDD is uh, Text Driven Development, MPD Feature Development, uh, Driven Development, Behavior Development. Like lot many Logis are available and design is a broad umbrella term which used for all the methods. Like it is many a time you can use just one uh, methodology or maybe you can combination of methods you can use 
can tailor it for according to your project need, according to your organization need, and you can start using those. So here, because of time constraint, I'm not going to discuss all the topics, but I'm going to discuss Scrum, which is widely used in the software industry, and 80% companies or 80% projects use Scrum as a method. So till you hear any doubt, any question. So let's move further. You know what is this? Any idea? Sir, Any guess? Yeah, correct. So this is a rugby game. And in rugby, all the team members, you know, stay one place. They work in a collaboration, try to save the ball. And they form this structure. This structure called Scrum. Same in software development or any project, entire team member form a structure and work towards objective, towards meeting uh, project goal, towards customer satisfaction, towards providing value to the user. That's why we called it Scrum. So we will again come back to this slide. Here we only need to understand what is a script, just one. Like we have dedicated slide for other things, so we will come to know it So what is a script? A script is a time bond. Page. So in some company it's a 15 days, in some company it's a one month. So it's, it's all depends, duration of the sprint all depends on your project requirement, your industry requirement, uh, your customer requirement. So if I give my example in my project, and my sprint duration is two weeks, 15 days. So every 15 days, the entire team members sit together and they work on uh, set of deliverables, and every 15 days, I uh, we need to produce working software. Working software means production ready software. People can start using those software. So all the phases, like whatever phases I mentioned here earlier, this all needs to complete in 15 days. It's not like earlier six months it's take time to complete. Honestly, we will not provide entire thing in 15 days. But what what we do? We first prioritize the things. Like what are the most important things we need to uh, finish, and we entire team works in the sprint and finish at the end of the sprint we finish working from. Okay. So let's see what are the roles and level. So there is three kind of role available in uh, Scrum. One is a Scrum master. Uh, this person is responsible for removing impediments, any bottleneck, team spacing. If team has any issue, like he is the person who is responsible for all the bottom edge issues, uh, if there is any dependency with other things, like he will remove all the uh, those kind of issues. This person, product owner, he is business expert. He know in and out about uh, that particular business. What is uh, what are the priorities of work he decide? Uh, like what are the values uh, which which work needs to finish first? Uh, that I decide. He maintained backlog. We will discuss what is backlog. He maintained everything. Like he is the person who take care of business aspect. And rest of the team members like developers, testers, UI expert, system integrator, self, all the uh, like remaining team members, they are part of team and they are working towards meeting the objective. Yeah. So uh, we can assume that the product owner is also the customer. Yeah, so many a time product on is a part of customer. Like suppose, uh, suppose I'm giving you one example, you are working on a packing software. Maybe your team members don't know about the complex uh, rules related, business logic related to uh, packing software. But this type can be from customer side and maybe he can say, okay, I will play a role of product owner and I have entire knowledge of packing related system. And I know what are the priorities which need to deliver first. So this type can be part of uh, uh, customer and start contributing uh, in the team. Okay. So it all depends. Like it all depends how billing is there. Let's say you feel the customer. The customer is the product owner. It all depends on situation. Many times it is not possible. Many times you need to hire your product owner, and that that is a part of your team. Or company, but he already has uh, ample amount of knowledge related to that business area. Okay. Suppose you are working in a CRM uh, application, you 
you can hire CRM expert from market and now that person is part of your team. So it all depends on the project situation. So it varies from industry to industry? Yes. Like no, this scenario is not very industry to industry, but that guy should be knowledgeable in that particular uh, industry. Who can be there, who, who is, should be capable enough to play a role of uh, product So Scrum Master also needs to be knowledgeable about things, otherwise he will not be able to solve the problem. So many times Scrum Master do require that business knowledge. So business knowledge is his, his uh, forte. His main area, work area is removing impediments. So many times we don't require that functional knowledge. But this is like essential required, uh, like functional knowledge. So Master needs the operational Yes, yes, yes. The yes. Yeah, correct. Scrum uh, master should know the entire project life cycle, how different agencies are involved, how different stakeholders are there, and how we can quickly remove those impediments. So it's it's uh, okay. So these are the rituals in the scrum. So there are four rituals in the scrum. Ritual means meeting. So all the team members sit together and start. Meetings. So they start with the sprint planning meeting. Suppose, uh, suppose my company decide okay, we will have 15 days of the sprint. So at the starting of the sprint, first we do the sprint planning meeting. So all the team members sit uh, together at one place, and we will discuss okay, what are the things we are going to deliver in next uh, 15 days? What are the high uh, like what are the things which provide more value to the user? And what is uh, like what is the complexity behind those uh, requirements? What is uh, if, uh, what is what is the story point? They also calculate the story point in the size of like what is the size of work? Because if, if team has a capacity of uh, working 200 story point, in 50 days, they cannot take work more than 200 story point. Okay, so all so these things. The story point. The story point. Uh, actually, I don't want to discuss a lot of complex things. Just to just to understand, it's a like the way we calculate uh, water in liter. Okay. So the the work, the size of the work we calculate in this place. So we need separate entire two days of training to understand a lot of complexity all related to uh, scrum, but I'm trying to keep it here uh, as light as possible. So here we discuss sprint planning. So after the planning, sometimes planning meeting goes four hours, sometimes it goes to six hours. And after the planning meeting, team decide okay, these are the chunk of work which I'm going to going to work in this sprint and we will finish okay and it's entire thing is in uh, like in a democratic environment it's not one person who going to tell you you have to finish this work entire team actually decide okay we are going to finish this work in next 15 minutes okay so they are team members are equally responsible for meeting the objective it's not like that if somebody else is telling you you have to finish then maybe after 15 days you can say i'm not able to do this but if themselves you say, okay, I will finish this work, then you are accountable for this, you are responsible for this. Second is daily scrum. So every morning, entire team gather at one place. Now it is online, so uh, maybe in Zoom call. And they discuss only three things. Like every person discuss only three things. What I did yesterday, what I am going to do today, and what are the impediments and bottleneck I am facing. And it's the scrum master's responsibility who noted that, uh, that uh, impediments and resolve that impediments later on. Okay. Third meeting is sprint review meeting. So in the sprint review meeting, at the end of the sprint, which is which happens at the end of the sprint, when the entire team finish their job, finish their uh, work, then they sit with the uh, customer end user and they provide demonstration of working software. Okay, this entire team work in last 15 days. And they wrote it down uh, whatever feedback or input they have from the customer side. And they again need to work in uh, those inputs in the next sprint, when the next sprint is start. And this is last meeting that is we call the sprint retrospective. So in the retrospective, they, they see what they did good work in the uh, past sprint, uh, last sprint, and what are the bad things happened in the sprint. So in future, they don't, uh, they, they may. They may, like, uh, they may continue good part, good thing, or they can reduce those things which is bad happening in the sprint. So this is retrospective, it's not a blame game to anyone. Like it's a collective 
as a team what they did good and what as a team what they did wrong. So these are the four rituals we usually follow in Scrum. Okay, let's move to artifacts. So first artifact is product backlog. Product backlog is nothing. It's just a list of all the work of the, all the activity which is required to perform in a project in order to meet the objective. So if I take the example of, uh, let's suppose take the example of Amazon shopping website. Okay. And let's imagine uh, you are the project manager or a scrum master of Amazon.com okay. and you are going to develop this website. Okay. Then your product owner, because product owner is the person who has all the uh, business related ideas, business related information. They will create a product backlog, like what sort of so I'll give you one example of product backlog. So let's suppose it's a uh, Amazon website. We have a lot of uh, uh, like lot of things, lot of uh, functionality, Amazon like product search, you can do product search, product listing, product details, uh, ad delete product, uh, shopping cart. So we have these all the activities which we need to do, and these are the functionality required to build a Amazon.com. So this is our product backlog. So, product manager, a product owner actually build product backlog. Now, we are just trying to uh, correlate everything. Okay. So, here again, they do a sprint value meeting. Okay, at the starting of the uh, meeting, and they decide. Okay, so this is a lot of work. We are not going to complete all these work in next 15 days. So, we will pick only these four uh, work. We will finish in next 15 days. So now this is a sprint plan. So selected work, which team is going to work in next 15 days. Now this is part of the sprint plan. Okay. So in sprint plan, we, we, we measure the progress of work with the sprint. So like this is pretty success or failure. If, if we are able to achieve all the work which is mentioned in sprint plan, then it is success. And if we are not, then it is a failure. Then we will discuss in retrospective meeting why we are not able to achieve the objective of sprint in, in this sprint. Then after finish of my sprint backup, this is working software. Like these are the set of work we are able to achieve as a team. So here again example. So it's a success example. Okay, so team decided to finish work in next sprint and team achieve those up. But if sometimes team only able to finish this much of work and they are not able to finish this work, then it's move back to product backlog and this is my increment work. Okay. So are you able to correlate these terms? Yes, yeah. Any doubt, any confusion? I try to connect with live examples, that's why it, it will be easy for you. Yes. So increment is the work they have finished work. Finished work is increment. Working software, people can start using it. Okay. Like a backlog here means like it's a backbone for a suppose we can relate it to a backbone. Like backlog is like the task that we need to perform. Uh, backlog is a backlog is a it's an English term. Yeah. Backlog means the set of activity yeah. which yeah. need to finish yeah. in order to meet uh, meet the project objective. So maybe entire work of uh, backlog maybe team is able to finish in six months or one year. But we only pick high priority work in this way. Yes. Project management is really it's working 
you don't have any doubt or you think oh, it's, I don't think it's a good one or it's useful. So I will give you one example for that. So for this I need four volunteers. So how is that works? I'm going to give you one example. So I need three volunteers and one volunteer also I need to capture the time. So anybody have mobile phone? Four, four person, I need four person and one person will take care of timing. What you have to do, I have policy hands, okay? Hold it. You have to count all these points. Okay? After you finishing your counting, don't say how much, what is the number. Okay? Pass it to next person. You will finish all the counting. After finishing your counting, then you will pass to next to the third person. And you will take care of timing, like how much time each person each or each person. Almost time process. together, yeah, all process, it's took and note it down somewhere. Okay. And we have to count individually. Individually, yeah. After finishing, then only uh, this should be passed to next person. So this is just a representation of waterfall order. Like one process finished their task, then it's moved to next process, then this process finished their task, and then it's moved to next process and see how much time it is taking. Start. So here you can see the difference between both the methodologies. Like in SIL, we are not going to wait to finish one process at a time. All the processes are in a, uh, like in a similar manner we are going to that. That's why we are saving a lot of time in SIL. So the first thing we were doing that was a waterfall thing? Yeah, first one is a waterfall, waterfall thing and second one is in SIL. Okay. So we save a lot of time. How much time we have saved? 22 seconds we have seen. So it's just a simple example just to make you understand what is the difference between both of them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, so let's discuss what are the career opportunities in design project management. So, see this. See, I'm giving you an example of IT uh, industry, but it doesn't mean uh, like design project manager, management is only for IT. This is for all the industry. You can use this management methodology across any industry, whether it's uh, construction, telecom, healthcare, customer service, retail, everywhere project manager required. Okay. Without project manager, without scrum master, without design project manager, nobody can run their own project. That's all. Okay. One person is required who take care of all the issues, all the things, all the like we need to manage so many things. It's a full time job. It's a full time engagement in any project. Okay. So uh, once you uh, build a capability of project management, you learn all the skills, you acquire all the knowledge, then you are ready for all the industry. Okay, so, a lot of career opportunity available in the uh, market. You can search in any uh, job site and you can see how many opportunities available. And it's a good paying job. You can learn a lot of money in this profile okay, compared to other. So this is typical hierarchy of training uh, management. Like we all related reports to program manager, then under the program manager, design project manager or scrum master work. And under the scrum master, like business analyst, project coordinator, developer, testers, all the people work. Okay, so this is typical hierarchy of training uh, management, project management, project management team. So this is typical job description. I've uh, gathered this information from job site, government job site. So typical uh, job title is design project manager, scrum master, design coach, and these are the requirements. You should have knowledge of scrum, DVD, CAD, DVD, SAIL. These are the different methodologies which I just discussed a few hours back. Then you need to understand what are the screen planning, daily standard, all of these things that we have discussed, we have mentioned. Then you also need to understand different tools, like there are a lot of softwares available which help you to manage your project. Like for every, like we need software to manage your projects also. Okay. So Jira, Rally, these are the example of tools we, which you need to understand. You need to learn. Then uh, acceptance criteria. Then you, you should also have knowledge of uh, other concept of project management. Jira, you no, no, no. This is not for script writing. This is not for any development tool. These tools are for project managers. These tools will help you to manage resources. These tools will help you to manage your work. So, this is not for software. I have heard the same term Jira. My sister in law works in an IT firm. So, she actually uses this. Jira is used by all the team members. Even if you are a developer, even if you are a tester, you need to use Jira. You need to use Jira. Because you need to update the status of your, your work, like how much work you have finished. So in that case, you need to use Jira, regardless of what is your profile. Okay. So the Scrum Master is the person who actually coordinates with organization, product owner and development team. So it's the backbone of any team. So no, 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 Resort DevOps is entirely different thing. It is for project management. AWS is a cloud based tool. Resort is a cloud based tool. That is for hosting purpose. But this tool is for management of your work. Microsoft. Yeah, it's a Microsoft product. But primarily used by Scrum Master and DB to maintain their work. So these are the skills you need to develop. So I, I have divided the skills into two parts soft skills and hard skills. In soft skill communication, uh, problem solving skills, these, these skills you need to develop. So, communication is very important. Project, it's uh, like usually project manager to 90% of their work is related to communication. Involved in a lot of meetings, writing mails, a uh, lot of people, uh, interaction with various stakeholders. So, 90% of work is related to communication. Remaining 10% is other activities. Hard skills like you should know what is breakdown, breakdown structure, or how to do risk management, how to do shedding game. So these are the skills you need to develop. Okay. So for developing these skills, what you can do? You can write books. 
lot of books available. Even in your library, you will find lot of books on Agile, Scrum. So just try to learn those concepts. Then try to implement even even in your small project. Like suppose if you have a small work, a small project in your college uh, project, you can start implementing Scrum with the help of Scrum. Maybe suppose three four person working on a small college uh, uh, project, you can do a start uh, daily Scrum meeting. So these small concepts start implementing. Okay. Then whatever things we have discussed, it's just a tip of iceberg. There are not many things to be put there. So I'm just giving you example. Okay, so these are the terms you should understand. Okay. These are the terms you need to understand if you want to become a agile project manager. Then like what is interest? What is iterative development? How Jira works? This is true. So I'm just giving you one example. Yeah.
you are ready for job market. Okay, just try to build your concept, implement those uh, concepts in your day to day work, okay. and you are ready. And a lot of job opportunity waiting for you. Okay. So, what are the key, key takeaways of uh, this session? What we learned today? We learned what is predictive limitation of predictive project management. We learned the difference between traditional and design. What are the different design of yeah. And what are the uh, different design, design methodologies? What is a scrum? What are the different components of a scrum? Tools. Tools. How to become effective design of Soft skills and hard skills. Yeah, soft skills and hard skills. So now I am ready for any question and answer. Sir, yes, one by one, one we will discuss. Yeah. Sir, after Scrum, how do you say Scrum? AP testing. AP testing. What are factors? Okay. So, Scrum cycle actually, same. Let me explain to you. This 
is my work A, B, e, C, D. This is my product platform. My customer came and he said, okay, I need E also. Okay. Then I will ask my product owner. If I am going to uh, do E, then I need to remove any one from here. Tell me what is your priority. Okay, my product owner uh, say, so we don't need this. This has a low priority. This you can put here. So I move here. I put here. So this is my high priority. So maybe in sprint 3, I will work on this. If it is more high, then I will work in a sprint. I will move it to 1 and I will finish in a sprint 1. Overall project cost and time must be a sum total of all the sprint. See, my work. See, my scope can be varied, but my cost and time cannot be varied. I have only 15 days of time. You ask me what is important for you. I will work on that. But if the customer says, no, I want both these things. Then I, then I ask, what is your priority? You need it this in sprint 1 or you need this in sprint 2? And you gave me money only for 6 sprint. I cannot run beyond 6. I cannot go there. Then the customer will have to pay extra. Yeah, the customer needs to pay extra. Then which means cost or time may undergo revision. Yeah, that may be both. That, that's why mostly design projects run in it, uh, like time and material projects. Uh, like there you can vary your money part. But it's not fixed. Sir, so, so is that possible that A, B, C, D, and D are all No, it cannot be equally equally because we have only 60 members that are not going to increase because design uh, talks about a small team. Okay. If I increase my team member, then only I can get a more Okay, so that's why I'm talking about priority. So what is my priority for the next quarter? Which I we provide priority only those work items which provide more value to investment. session. I'm available on LinkedIn. And this is my email ID. I'm, uh, you guys have any questions related to design, project management, IT industry. You can write the question and whenever I get time, I will write the question. Thank you. Thank you.